Hey guys, and welcome to another video for Team Lotus Box. Today I'm going to be playing with a combo version of Urza centered around a card from Eldraine that's just starting to see some modern play. This card is a perfectly good role player in standard, but I think modern gives it the supporting tools it really needs to shine. The card is Gilded Use. So we're taking the traditional PO Urza shell, um, and we're really using Goose to push the explosiveness to the next level. Having a sort of like Lotus Petal effect in this deck is very powerful when you want to accelerate out your 3 and 4s ahead of curve. And then the fact that you can sink excess mana into it to create more artifacts and uh, potentially gain some life in aggressive matchups really gives this deck a new angle of attack. Um, the rest of the list is pretty standard. We're using Mirrodin Besieged as the win con because I think it's the least conflicting option with the main game plan of the deck. Uh, the most reasonable card to draw when not comboing off. We're actually playing two copies for redundancy there. And then the sideboard gives us access to some counter magic, some removal, a collective brutality for burn, um, a veil. There's a lot of blue control decks online right now. Uh, three Okos and three Damping Spheres. Damping Sphere is really good against Storm and big mana. And Oko is a great anti mid range and control card. It really lets you attack them from another angle. So with that, let's jump into the action. All right, so this hand is a perfectly solid keep. We can turn one Emery, and we have two POs for when things really get going. Opponent's mulliganing to six. And we're on the draw, so we'll see how that goes for us. Okay, so Water Grave Once Upon a Time could potentially be the, yeah, it's the Nassif deck. Or, I shouldn't say the Nassif deck. Uh, Andrea Gons has uh, won a PTQ with it. It's a new version of Hogak, essentially Hogakless Hogak. Um, and it looks quite powerful. So we're going to have to come prepared to race. And I'm just going to be casting these for zero. We want to get Emery down as soon as possible. Emery can help us dig for like a mox to get ahead of schedule. All right, we didn't mill an artifact, but we do have this bobble to bring back. So I'm just going to take a look in their upkeep. Uh, we're going to hope that their start is a little slower. Play draw seems very important in this matchup. All right, they did hit one Vengevine, so they've got probably got some power coming in. But their mills have been pretty bad so far. Um, all right, I guess they didn't have a second creature. No, they did, because they could cast the Secret Keeper. A little confused by that concession, but... I mean, I'll take it. I think that game was going to be a close. Uh, for sideboarding, I think we probably don't want to do a lot. Uh, usually they have some Okos and Damping Spheres, but we can answer the Damping Spheres with EE. And I think we want to be proactive and not try and fight the Oko fight, because they're better equipped to support that by attacking and blocking with they're recursive creatures, so um, Mystical Rebuke, Mystical Dispute and Metallic Rebuke are also options, and I think ultimately not worth bringing in, but something to consider. I'm just going to keep the deck streamlined and run it back. Potentially make some adjustments for game three if they seem necessary. All right, not keeping a six lander, despite it having an astrolabe. Um, and yeah, we'll keep this. We've got the PO, the Urza, got a lot of what we need. I think I'm going to get rid of this Engineered Explosives. This isn't really a matchup where it shines. Okay, they have Collector Oof, that's good to know. 
collector oof is something this deck can just beat, but might make me more inclined to bring in a push or two. Um, so I could use this bobble to scry, but I think it's probably worth saving for a trigger with Psy. And let's see. Um, probably gonna bottom both of these. We're on the hunt for a land or a mox. All right, so he's bringing Stitcher Supplier, and we're gonna. All right, so he milled a Honda dead. It's a new addition to the deck. Most people don't play that. And let's see. Gonna follow it up with a second Stitcher Supplier. Okay, so we're definitely under a lot of pressure here. A Mox Opal was probably one of the best draws in the deck. Love to see that. So I'm just gonna get the side down and hope that we can follow it up with a little more action next turn. If we draw a land, um, let me think. So if we draw a land, we get to Urza, and then we'll have three mana after that. So I probably need to crack the bobble because I need to actually go off pretty hard next turn. So if I hit another zero and a land, um, high roll a bit, I'll be able to play Urza and Pio. Alright, and our size resolved. All right, so I'm gonna crack this bobble and hopefully I draw zero and a land. Can really get off to the races. And hopefully they don't hit too much more damage. So a chill, it's quite good here. Really gonna put me to the test. And I'm just not gonna block, because if I block and I, he hits another chill, I just die. So, be taking that. And hopefully we draw really well and win the game next turn. Collector oof. Alright. That's gonna wrap it up. So our opponent has oofs and we're going to need to board in a few answers to that. I got a couple pushes. Probably don't want all of them. Maybe an Oko could be passable. I can trim on like a goose and a well. And probably another goose or an E. This isn't E's best matchup. I'm just gonna be taking a pretty light approach to sideboarding in this matchup. Still mostly focused on racing.
All right, and we're on the play. Got quite a solid draw here. Playing Urza ahead of schedule. Always love to see. And all right, our next turn will be pretty solid as well. All right, so opponent is resolving once upon a time. Looking for those high impact cards. It's pretty cool that once upon a time lets them add a lot more consistency to a combo deck like this. And mill four, all right. Gravecrawler set the bin, not the most threatening thing. And all right. A few more artifacts. Maybe some Psy or Sahili action. Honestly, a land is pretty good too. Just, you know, our old deck's pretty live. A lot of options. Alright, so we're going to start with Astrolabe, give us a little more information before we make our next move, although it'll likely still be Goose. And yep, just following it up with Goose. Drawing another Urza is pretty good here as well. So next turn, we have the ability to Urza, but we can't follow it up with a PO. Oh, wait, we can, yeah. It's the Construct and the Mox. So we're really going to be off to the races next turn. And them playing Gravecrawler is not the clock they need. I think I'm going to be making green with this so that I can use goose if I get um, collector roofed. And all right, I guess that's enough. So some pretty quick games. Opponent did take a bit, but we got there. And on to the next match. And this is a great hand, and we're on the play. So let's jump into the action. Potentially could be a turn four or five kill if we draw well. is a phenomenal draw. Alright. So next turn we can play Urza, play Besieged on Mirren, and then still play a Mox. Yeah, that's that's a pretty stellar turn. Some consideration to playing a Mox to play on Force of Negation, but I think it's probably not worth it. We'd probably rather he forces a Mox than forces some of the other cards in our hand. And it's only one additional draw step to draw it. Alright, make it two, but still totally fine. So here I could also decide to just PO. If 
draw four. But I think it's probably a little better to get the Besiege down and try and go off next turn. So we're going to go Mirren. Now how the win condition part works is once you're, you've drawn your whole deck, you pick it up with a paradoxical outcome and you set it to Phyraxian. Then you engineer explosives yourself, uh, destroying all your artifacts, and then win the game in your end step. So the fact that it offers an additional copy of Psy while also letting you instantly win the game when you do combo off makes it a pretty great addition to the deck in my opinion. Alright, this is all going quite smoothly. So Oko. Oko is annoying. Uh, it is going to blank our Urza. We're still going to be able to do a lot of damage next turn, though. We have access to 6 mana, which could potentially be enough to um, go off with the... Yeah, we're, we're not going to play this, because we could potentially replay our and go off um, if we have a good draw off of this. So we're going to need to draw five. And I'm going to save this fetch and leave up a snow-covered island so I can replay Astrolabe while also getting Sanctuary. So yeah, picking up these five cards. Hopefully this doesn't get Force of Negation. All right, it did not. Now we get to think a little bit. So yeah, we do want the sanctuary. Actually, we, with two outcomes in hand and we can get the Sanctuary later, it's pretty unnecessary. I'm just going to get an island. And we want to play Emery to turn on the Mox Amber. And we will play the Mox Amber. Mox Opal. We're going to be a little off of actually casting Urza again, winning the game this turn, but we should be able to really build up an overwhelming advantage. And I'll probably just be deploying as many artifacts as I can in attacking. So I can use this to filter and let me cast another Astrolabe. Uh, not really that much point eating this turn. Nothing on the other side of the board is too scary. And I'll just follow it up with a Gilded Goose. So this lets me sit at a very comfortable board position and also have answers to pretty much anything they could play. I'm just going to attack the Oko. Trump block seems expected. Next turn, I have enough mana to Urza and then Outcome twice, even in case my opponent has a, a, a Force of Negation. Most of those decks do main deck right now. Alright, so here our opponent plays a 
Master of the Pearl Trident, which would be really good if they had a little bit more board. But at this point, the damage is pretty irrelevant, so we're going to just be able to close out the game next turn. And they're really in the tank, but I don't see a way out. I could be surprised. It's happened before. But have to be something quite remarkable. Alright, and yep, they are going to attack. Makes sense, they have to kill me. And I'm just going to play Urza. And we will... Probably just want to kill them with damage. It takes too long to um, fully combo off. So I'm just going to play this for two and pop it. And then if they have some form of interaction post combat, I can go off and still win this turn. Cool. So they did not. So I think in this matchup, we want the removal. Um, the Mystical Disputes seem quite good. And I think we don't want to get into the Oko fight. I'm just going to try and go over that. And I'll probably trim a Besieged. Um, our Trump Walkers aren't as good against their Legion of Island Walkers. I'm just rely on my removal to keep me safe. I'll probably trim some of the usual suspects. Like Everflowing Chalice is one that you can often get rid of. We can go down on a Witching Well. And we can shave on some Goose. And there we go. Now on to game two. There's some consideration for bringing in Collective Brutality, but I think it's not just a very good spell on rate. Uh, Veil of Summer as well, depending on how much counter magic I see. I kind of expect their hate to be more in the form of collector oofs and some light counter magic, so I'm not going to board it in Veil. A Mystical Dispute seems like it shines in this matchup, just as a very efficient removal spell that can also answer Oko. Or protect your spells from counter magic, even. Alright, the sand is fine. It's good enough. Wishing well lets us, you know, dig for a little bit more of what we need, and we got a removal spell. Keep us safe. Alright, opponent opens on Aether Vial, which is definitely their best possible start. And. Just gonna lead on this well, try and dig into more artifacts. Cantrip, a little unfortunate to pick up another land here, but you know, make it work. Scrap two, okay. So bobble outcome. I think we're fine with not having a second outcome right now because we can just always sanctuary it back. So I'm just gonna take the bauble and probably be fetching a, a black land. Alright, so opponent is ticking up. And if they play an oof or something I need to push, I'm probably going to push it on their turn. Um, play around Force of Negation. Seems pretty free to do. Could get punished by an actual castable counterspell, but I probably expect them to have four forces in their deck. So hopefully that pays off for me. And no reason to cast that anymore. Now we can save it in case we draw a token producer. 
So I'm going to try this and If I get wrecked, then sorry, viewers, but I think this is the correct play. Right. And it looks like we got that one through. So let's see what they followed up with. To pass. All right, so. Yeah, it's just going to be a pass from me as well. I can also get back Fatal Push if I think it's necessary. Um, so I could play the Bobble and the Opal and just crack well. And honestly, that, that's probably the move. Uh, my PO is not impressive right now. I can, I can build it up, do a little more later. Alright, so the opponent's just fetching and probably violing in a threat. I could crack the well in response in case they vial in a... Uh, there's pretty much no reason not to do that. Yeah, just in case they're violing in another oof. It'd be real safe. And... I'm going to crack the bottle too. Just keep playing around that oof. Drew another astrolabe, and we're still a little ways off from really our PO being the star. Alright, the bottle's pretty replaceable. Okay, so Trickster entering. See, followed up with a little word, something like that. Could be pretty good. That will not be the case. So I think here I probably want to draw the push. I can sanctuary it and just draw it with Astrolabe. If they play a particularly good creature, I'll have an answer. Or I could just slow down the clock. Depends a little bit on what I draw, too. Chalice on zero. Okay. That's a pretty big annoyance. So, luckily I did draw some one-drops. Um, Alright, I'm going to Sanctuary. Still get back the push. And I'm going to need to grind this out. Oops, need to spend snow mana for that. And I think I don't have an answer in my deck for that chalice, so... You know, it's definitely a beatable card, but something that's going to be fairly annoying to handle. I can still just set up E and Emery to keep the board clear, or just beat down with what I got going on with an outcome and token makers if I draw one of those. I'm just not going to push the trickster, save it for something better. I can outgain this with a goose every turn. It's no real need. And okay. Well, we'll just play a patient game. Continue making food. Maybe eat some food if needed. 
Okay, the Lord of Atlantis. That's going to be good enough to get a push from me. It's honestly, Oof doesn't even do too much right now. Genitus. They're just going to pop it. Relic's not going to do too much, so I hope they just leave it out instead of digging to find more pressure. I'm going to use my mana to gain some life. And, alright. I think I want to hide that until they play another card. Um, well, it could just be time to... fire this off, and if he counters it, I get to resolve Chalice. Here, not Chalice, Paradoxical Outcome. So, yeah, I'll just put that on two. And, alright, that did resolve fine. sure I targeted the right cards. I'm just gonna fire it off. It's one card in hand. Two is the correct number to leave this on, so if it gets countered, it's still not the end of the world for me. And it resolved though. So I'm just going to pitch a bunch of zeros. Really need to draw an Urza, an Emery, any action cards. So thankfully just did that. And then right. get rid of some of these zeros. Trickster, it's a pain. So all the zeros out. And taking four here, potentially more if they have a lord. So they do know about the E, so unless they have an answer to it, they probably won't expose more creatures. So them drawing a land is good news, absolutely. And yeah, we're just going to start with, we want to leave up green mana. I'm just going to start with E for two. It's probably still more important to resolve the Emery than the E. And all right, that resolving was great. So, I'm just going to play out the creatures. Pretty 
much doe the opponent has an oof. So if they vile, I think I let it resolve. They certainly would have just preemptively viled it in. No reason to let the E sit out. So I have enough mana to play two goose and Emery and then hold up E activation. And these goose are going to be real good. Just insulating my life total. Play some goose control. It's a powerful archetype. Really do a lot to add some resiliency to the deck. It's possible I should have kept a zero instead of uh, this fetch land. Just in case I drew, drew a token maker. Could definitely see that. Alright, so opponent is in a pretty tough spot. Let's see what they can bring. Ooh, a brazen bar. Okay. I mean, that plays. It's going to get some damage in, keep the game going. And. Yeah, they're just going to cast it. I will be able to just kill it next turn, but, you know, for now, that's quite solid. So, I get to play for three. Might as well cast the one from the yard. I like completely blanked on the fact that I had Mystical Dispute. Um, I should have just disputed Brazen Borrower. Mentally, I just like turned it into not a card a while ago, so sorry about that one. Hopefully it won't come back to bite me. And I'm just gonna chill. Probably going to be cracking food and activating. Um, let me think. Is there a point? I mean, he's activating for two. So, yeah, we'll just go up to four. In case it's an oof. So I definitely put myself in a much worse spot than I needed to be. But these goose can still go a long ways. Having another E here is quite solid. 
Yeah, I really got punished for forgetting <laughs> I had a card. But we're going to gain a lot of life. We'll be fine. Interesting. Did not attack. Okay. And I think a little bit. So I have access to... If I go blue-green... Or sorry, it'd be just blue-black. Yeah. So I really don't want to E for one. Eing for two is solid though. And I'd rather E in their beginning of combat step in case they have Merfolk. So if I do that, I have access to enough mana to make two food, um, which I'll choose to do over casting my cantrip. I'll find room to work that in later. All my Urzas are in hiding. I didn't board them out. And yeah, they've, they've had enough. I guess they can't beat the light gain from Goose, so it's pretty cool. Goose put in a lot of work. Didn't play that game the most cleanly, but still got there in the end. Alright, this is an interesting hand. Um, so we're on the draw. I think with between Sanctuary and just having double ups of these legends and only a Mox. It's a little slow. I'm just going to send it back. I think we can do better on six. Um, this hand is... Uh, I mean, we have so many artifacts. I think I'm going to keep it over going to five. It's a pretty similar hand, but at least we have an outcome, so if we do get there, I have a little more upside. Alright. Could be a mirror match of some sort. Maybe a shadow deck. Alright. Mirror match. Ooh, all right, not quite a mirror match. It's a Kethis. All right, it's a subscriber of our Patreon, most likely, or someone who saw Collins' list. All right, Witching Well was a great draw. So this is going to be a hard matchup, um, quite unfavored. In fact, and I'm just going to fetch first so that if I want to keep both cards and use all my mana next turn I can. It's a minor upside but it's worth it. It's not going to be relevant too often with Emery but you know. Alright so we do want this Urza and Gonna hope that our opponent's draw is not very good. Do love to see Kethis in action though. So their mill was solid, they hit a cantrip, and chromatic or sorry, Hope of Curiper is also a almost unbeatable in this matchup. They can loop it with Emery, um, so they can silence me every turn for the rest of the game. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty tough to beat that. I need to get an E out quickly. But I can't get an E out if I continue to be silenced. So, there's the problem. And if they show that they, you know, are going to silence lock me, I pretty much don't have a way out. So, at least in game one. So, you know, I would... Okay, and they have the grinding station. So, I'm going to let them play it out so that you guys can see the Kethis combo deck in action. It's a pretty new deck, and I think it's quite cool and powerful.
Yep, so they're going to activate, and then they're going to respond to the trigger. So now if they hit a, if they milled a Kethys, they could just get Unearth and win the game instantly. Looks like they didn't, though, so they'll probably get a Kethys, and then um, once, yeah, once they... Uh, once they get Kethos and Grinding Station out, they can just mill their whole deck in pretty short order. Oh, did they just get an Unearth or have an Unearth? So we could just be dead this turn. It'd be pretty reasonable to get an Unearth. They have a billion looks. Their odds of breaking would probably be sub 5%, because every artifact is a mill 3, and they can cast another one with Emery. So they are silencing me, and we'll see if I'll be dying this turn. Okay, so they don't have it this turn, but they certainly tutored up a Kethys, so that makes it's the correct play in their spot. They have me silence lock, so no need to gamble and get an unearth to win this turn. Although winning on turn three is much cooler than winning on turn four. And right, so I cannot cast any non-creature spells, so I'm just gonna cast Psy. And I'll pass to them. Let them take it home. Cool to see one of my brews out in the wild. Here's their graveyard. Yeah, the Kethos deck really preys on Urza. Do the silence lock and the fact that it's just a faster combo. We're going to need to board into a much more controlling deck to have a chance. Post board, we do have a lot of play though, so. No. Alright, so now from here, it's really easy for them. All they have to do is sack the artifacts. Every time they sack an artifact, they mill three, and then they'll be able to exile two artifacts. Um, since their deck has 30 artifacts, every time. They exile two artifacts, they get to cast a bunch and mill like 10 to 15. And then they'll eventually mill their whole deck, float a bunch of mana with their Moxen, because they're playing eight Moxen, and then cast a Jace and win the game. Uh, it's just deterministic from this point, so I'm not going to make them play it out. All right, so Oko is quite good. You can shut down their creatures, provide some much needed interaction. Um, we probably want the pushes. And not sure about the counters. I think I might board in the rebukes. There aren't that many blue spells. Just take this as our controlling approach. And since we're going more controlling, I'm gonna cut a PO and I'm going to trim on some geese. I think the token makers are, you know, they're fine, but not at their absolute best here. And I'll trim a witching well and a chalice. And then hmm. yeah, I think even the third token maker, we're not necessarily trying to completely go off. It's going to be besieged so that our mox hammers are on more often. Huh, turn two Oko on the play. I think I'm going to keep this for science. Oko is really good against their deck, and I think it might just be powerful enough to take me home against draws that are a little below average for them. Especially with Goose to keep feeding it food. Yep, 
It can elk their grinding station. It can elk their kethis. Essentially, against the against an oko, they have to get their whole combo down in one turn. Just go off from there. Wow. All right. So turn one Emery mill grinding station. This basically forces me to elk the Emery. I don't love having to do that, but they're going to snowball too quickly. If I don't... Uh, drawing an Urza was absurd, though. That will help me stabilize and protect my Oko. Oko's going to take a shot here, though. That's for sure. But they don't have any way to get more damage in on it this turn, so it will survive and potentially let me elk something or make f food. Probably just going to make food and cast Urza, though. In pretty much every circumstance. They milled a second Emery, so they could go off with um, Kethis if they get pretty lucky. Depends how heavily they boarded. Uh, if they left their starting like Legend Density, they can just win with Emery Loop. Mm, that might be what they're going for. If they have land Kethis, they can probably win next turn. I think I need to play to win and not play to not lose. So I'm just going to get that Urza out there and hope they don't have it. So we did resolve our Urza. It's a good sign. Now we're in a weird spot, though. If you just cast Grinding Station, we kind of have to elk the Grinding Station. We're going to need to draw something else good, basically. Alright, so it looks like they might have an Unearth. If they have an Unearth and they hit Kethis, um, it's just game. So we'll see. They did not hit Kethis. If I was them and I had an Unearth, I would definitely continue to go for it and just mill the Mox Amber. Um, looks like that might be what they're doing. Alright, they bricked again. Pretty lucky. They've gone for, through 33 cards without, or 27 cards, now 30 without hitting a Kethis. And yeah, they bricked again, so. Okay. They're definitely going to keep trying. And. Yep. Wow. That's absurdly lucky for me. opponent has seen 33 cards without hitting a Kethis. And if they hit a Kethis, that was game at any point. But we get to play on. So they hit another station, so no point elking station. So I'm going to just elk their Emery and hope they brick off for another turn. I'm just going to activate hers as well. Going to get a little more going. Could even hit a push, and that makes my life really easy. Just get to Elk Emery and uh, sorry, push the Emery and then Elk the station. So Mox is fine. Will come in handy down the line. Yeah, you can untap your station. I'm elking the Emery anyways. 
The fact that station triggers on my artifacts is pretty funny, though. Yeah, we're just going to leave the blocker back. Point doesn't really matter. We did keep this hand to see how Emery versus the world went. So right now it's a pretty close fight. Really anyone's game. All right. So they continue to put us in a spot where we have to use our Oko on their Emery every turn. Smart. They get to keep a station out. And looks like they hit their Kethis. So that's game. Not much we can do about that. Um, they have plenty of legends, a very well-stocked graveyard. So again, they're just going to be able to keep casting these moxes and hopes um, over and over again until their entire deck is in their graveyard. And then plus Jace. And that's all, all she wrote. Yeah, but love to see the Kethis deck in action here. Uh, opponent played it well, and I hope they're enjoying it. Comparing the two, because um, Kethis is kind of a variant of PO, I think Kethis gets a lot of points for speed, but it's definitely less resilient. And I really like how the Gooses help with both the speed and the resiliency in the burn matchup in this deck. You can't really play Goose in Kethis because you need a high density of legends. I'm honestly not sure which one is better right now, though. I'm not... Says a lot about the strength of Kethis. Alright, gonna keep this. We got some token makers, we got an Urza, and we got a Witching Well. Can help us find some stuff we need in between. Fortunately, on the draw here, on the draw against Storm, not where you wanna be. Alright, Emery was a good pickup. Gonna need to hope their draw is incredibly bad. Um, I mean, we're gonna want that. We're basically just gonna scale up to curving out and casting Urza. So the fourth land is gonna come in handy. Put down a Psy in the meantime. We're all, yep. Likely dead turn three, but We'll, we'll see. Uh, doesn't really matter, but I'll do it this way. These are the matchups where having ascendancy would definitely be nice. But I can't really race back very effectively. So, yep, they're off to the races. And, alright. Looks like they don't just have it. Playing it tapped land, yep. Well, it's good. We live to fight another day. And, alright. Gonna be casting. I guess it's better to cast Mirrored and Besieged. Just because if they do a mini grip shot next turn, they can't take it out. And we're doing Mirren. You want these mirrors. Like a Mox Opal. If I draw Outcome, I could potentially win next turn. Need to get pretty fortunate and have them just brick off entirely again, but chances there. play Psy and then play E and have it be mana neutral, which is pretty cool. But 
as it stands right now, I am going to get to play Urza next turn and have enough mana left to spin once. Let's see where we go from there. So they bricked. We did draw the outcome. So not much to say except that I am jamming. Maybe, like, it's kind of likely they have a remand, but we cannot give Storm time. And there's just no way that that's the right play. So, yeah, we're going to jam. I could just cast the E, but again, we're, we're not, not messing around. Urza resolves. Wow. That is not what I expected. Food, 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 and I'm gonna play Psy and play E for zero. get to make two tokens from here and really go off to the races. I'm going to cast PO and probably return everything except the, let's see, so I'll have two mana floating. Yeah, I'm gonna return one of the token makers. I think it's worth it to get another card deep and eh, but with two token makers out, three mana is basically a card anyways. Yeah, all right. We're just gonna do the cards. We can turn mana into cards so easily with Psy. There's no point picking up the side. Alright, cool. So, we were almost certain to get there, but our draws were pretty bad. We would have drawn five, and we would have had enough mana to probably draw like... Yeah, it's, it's really hard to say. With Psy, we could keep chaining through these and probably find another one, but we definitely weren't a lock to get there, so... Great to get a concession in that spot. Uh, Alright, so we want spheres, we want our counter magic, and I think we want our pushes. Probably don't want Oak Ogre, Tally, or Veil. And we're really going to slow down, so some of these are going to come out. Um, you can probably afford to cut a Besieged. And... We'll trim Goose, trim a well, trim Chalice, and trim two E's. Potentially even last besieged. Yeah, we could just go down to two POs also. Yeah, probably the last besieged and two POs. Really become a control deck. So what we need to do in the matchup. I think even we're slowing down enough that I'd rather have a wishing well over the goose. So and probably probably just no goose. Bring in the ever flowing chalice as well, keep our artifact count up. Cause in game one we're definitely trying to race, but post board we're taking it very slow. Got lucky to win playing their game post board, so now they have to play ours. Alright, here we have a pretty interesting hand. I 
think it's a mulligan. We have redundant emery's. It's a little slow, and we can't turn this metallic rebuke online quickly. I think we can do better on six. Sanctuary also gums up the works a bit when it's in your opener. And this hand is solid. We again have rebuke. Um, we just get to bottom the sanctuary. And we have a chalice. Can let us maybe accelerate out an Urza ahead of schedule if we draw it. Alright, so that was a phenomenal draw. Definitely be leading with that. Makes everything flow much more smoothly. This lets me play Chalice with Rebuke up next turn if I just play the E out on zero. And drawing Urza was pretty great here, obviously. Best card in the deck, so love to see that. Oh, are they going for an empty Aria Flame? Okay. Hmm. That's going to be a problem. We can play E on three. Thanks to the Chalice. It's going to be a hard sell, though. I think I am just going to play this with multi-kicker and relax for a turn. I'm not going to play the E anymore. I think they used a ritual, so it's pretty unlikely I die this turn. And I'm more concerned with being able to play it. Actually, hmm. I could just run them out of gas. How many spells can I survive? I can survive, so first one's one, two, three, so six, four is ten, five is fifteen, six is twenty-one, so the seventh spell kills me. I could just counter a card draw spell and hope they flood out. Um, this lets me play a little pr more proactively, because I do need to kill them. And I want to get this Damping Sphere down, so my next turn if I draw land is probably going to be Urza Sphere. It's going to be hard otherwise to work the rebuke in here. So yeah, ritual is fine. And I'm going to counter the Manamorphose. Oh, shit. Yeah, I was thinking about that wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't save a mana on this, so I actually can't rebuke. So we'll we'll just give him a little bluff, you know. Float some blue mana, then be like, no, nah, you know what, you're good, you're good. Unfortunate, but not too likely to impact the outcome of the game. If I played Sphere that turn, I really don't see how I win this game. So they can still cast a few spells with uh, Aria out per turn and kill me. So I really wanted to play to getting Urza down next turn, get the clock going. So two more does the trick. Wow. Potentially they flooded. And... Awkward. Alright, so Rebuke doesn't do too much at this point. I'm really just going to slam Saheeli. Pieces of the puzzle. Alright. 
That's enough. We're we're good here. Aria Flames came pretty clutch. Maybe I won't board in all my pushes. Eh, I still don't don't mind this method though. We have answers. So Arias, they still have guys in their deck. Yeah, I'm gonna just keep it the same. All right, the sand is excellent. We'll be keeping. Mox Opal would really lead to some busted things where we could turn to Chalice plus Fear. Put a mold to five. Well, fortunate for them, but quite good for us. So my next turn can be Chalice Well. Chalice Well really letting me scry for that extra mana source and make sure I can Urza Sphere the next turn. Definitely the nuts. Alright, so we do have that mana source in hand now. Gas. Uh, probably don't need a second Urza. Take the Mox though. Because their counter magic is just going to be remands. So is it just Aria? Yeah. We're at 28. And Island Urza could just cast the E. I'm not very likely to kill them the way I configured my deck though, so I'll probably just want more value out of it next turn. from all of these and draw five or does that leave me I'm in a pretty good spot we're gonna see what happens there's a little risk that he counters my sphere on the way down but I think that that's pretty minimal considering upside of just ending the game and if it's a remand, that's also fine. Yeah. Leaves us with enough mana to still cast it. And we have enough zeros to make sure we get to recast our sphere after. They know that this is probably impossible to come back from, so got that one. Damping Sphere putting in a lot of work in that game. I mean, the game was short, but pretty much it's what shut the door. Damping Sphere is a great card in Modern right now. I uh, would highly recommend it in pretty much most sideboards. So basically, for Damping Sphere to be good, your deck has to kill fairly quickly. Um, 
because it does get worse against pretty much every deck you've boarded in against as the game goes long. But, you know, in Urza, in Shadow, in uh, if you're playing Dredge, anything like that, I'd probably be playing some Spheres right now. And, alright, get to battle for this 4-1. Right, this hand is Clear Keep. Just, you know, we got a Mox, we got two Cantrips, we got some Token Makers, we got Outcome, we got it all. Alright, so... Grove Aethervile. Not 100% sure what I'm up against, to be completely honest. Um, Goose was an interesting draw. I think I'm just going to vomit my whole hand now. So we're going to Astrolabe, get Metalcraft when we play these. Something to be said for not playing all of these because it lets us have zeros in our hand to make tokens immediately. But I think I'm more partial to just getting on the board faster. And I'm still not 100% sure what's going on on my opponent's end of the table. So we'll see. Um, all right. So I'm probably just going to play Mirrored and Besieged. Oh, I could just play Sahili. I'm a little worried Sahili might die if they're doing something real crazy. So I think I'm just going to Besieged and cast Emery. Cast Emery first, might as well. Alright, didn't mill too much. So we're going Mirin, and I will be sacking the ball ball because I can just bring it back. It's probably the best thing to bring back unless he plays a really good two. Really curious. Okay, so it is goblins. It's probably combo goblins. I'm gonna need to get ahead of them quickly. Combo goblins is an interesting archetype to explore now that we have Grum Gully in the fold. And a Mogwar Marshal. Seems good. up next. Hope they don't Grum Gully me. Definitely lose this game if they come off too quickly. A red cap. Also quite good. So I am just going to crack the bauble. Um, we have a lot more artifacts, and I need to dig for an Urza ASAP. They are one Grum Gully away from winning the game. And what did they reveal? Arid Mesa. All right, not a Grum Gully. So, all right. I think here I just I can just play this and PO probably puts me in the best spot to find Urza and win next turn I know it's um, not quite ideal in terms of maximizing my tokens like I could play Sahili and do it next turn but I just gotta go fast they have four um, of the goblin that tutors and foreground gullies, I assume. So, you know, being dead to eight cards is not a good spot. All right, so picking these up. Drop four.
And yeah, he can ping my goose for one, but that doesn't do enough. So, opponent agrees. We did find an Urza, so next turn things are looking good if we survive. So I probably just want to get Emery down, distract him a little bit. If he has like a munitions expert, I'd rather he uses it on that than an Urza. Uh, and we'll just hold the rest. Yeah, I don't really see a reason to play out anything else, because next turn I Urza. I want to make sure... Alright, I'm going to play the Bobble too, because I want to make sure when I cast Urza I have enough mana to PO right away a few munitions experts. It's a small thing to pay attention to. Prospector means that uh, if he has Goblin Matron, that's that's just game. He can cast it. He can vial in the Matron and cast Grum Gully with the three lands. Activates. If it's a main phase, it's probably a Matron. There's it could be a war chief if there's a beatdown plan. Oof. And Aldrain is making waves across the board. Grimgully the generous. Generously giving me a defeat on turn four. Pretty wild game. You can turn forward. If uh, we're on the play, we might have had that one. So, yeah. Grum Gully is essentially a Vizier of Remedies in this case. Uh, their Persist Creature gets a plus one, plus one counter, so they can bring it back infinite and just kill us. Pretty cool. I was thinking of throwing together that deck for a video. I think, you know, I think it'll be coming down the line. I think that and Kethis are on my short list to make videos of. I think, you know, there's definitely a good build of goblins out there. Just have to find it. Maybe my opponent has. I think I want to just board pretty lightly, do that. Their mana costs are kind of spread out, so he's not at its best, but it's still fine. Trim one. I'll just do one Oko. Yeah, no, I'll do two Okos and I'll just trim it besieged. I think I can maul this hand. It's a little lacking in things to do in the mid parts of the game, but it has Urza an outcome, has cheap artifacts, that's enough for me. They're, I'm not sure what their hate is. It could be Chalice, it could be Sphere. Um, Definitely hoping it's not Chalice, and I think since I don't, if I knew they had Chalice, I would just play these, but I don't, so I think I'm just going to hold them. Because I'm giving up a lot of equity if I draw a token maker, if I just play those. Alright, shock Skirk. Seems good. Astrolabe for us. This means we can Urza next turn. So I probably will just play these. 
depending on my draw, because now that I can guarantee Urza it's worth playing around a Chalice. And the whole risk reward uh, changed. And yeah, you're just gonna dump. Alright. Hopefully they play a fairly inconsequential goblin. And we'll be alright. Wow, their hand must be excellent. If they kept it with um, you know, only a one lander. Definitely got to turn in the game quickly. And yeah, we'll just chill here. Next turn, we can try and go for it. Pretty safe to just wait a little bit. Future Goblin. Alright, so now if they have a Grumgully next turn, they get to add infinite mana and can probably figure out a way to kill us. So we gotta go. So yeah, I'm gonna just cast E from my yard. So give me the option to set it on a different number after I'm done. And we'll do so we get to draw five here. is pretty likely to get there and get a win this turn, but not a lock. Um, Alright, so this probably does make it a lock. Just going to do that, and cast a sigh. a bunch of artifacts we have two outcomes They scoop. We did concede instead of making them manually kill us, so that would be some nice etiquette. At least in response to the next one, seems like a fine time to. Try and put enough artifacts in our yard to ensure that we win the turn in our end step. It's pretty valid not to scoop if he has the win next turn because. Some lists don't play the instant win con. All 
Oh uh, yeah, so I should just start by showing him the besieged. So Phyrexian and technically not completely optimal in terms of making thopters now, but mostly just trying to show them that we have the win. Opponent is, however, not buying. So, put out some astrolabes, put out all our zeros. And, all right, they know we got it. Cool, appreciate it, opponent. And, I think we're gonna keep the same plan Pushes seem necessary. Brutality is pretty slow. Oko can answer a few random hate cards, but I think we don't want to get flooded on that effect. Also a little slow. And yeah, we we'll keep running the same thing. Generally tend to board lighter than most people, I think, with this deck, but it's a uh, approach I'm fine with. Don't want to dilute the deck too much. I will go full mid-range in actual mid-range matchups. We just haven't played one of those. I think it might be ambitious to try and become a full control deck here. Just another Skirk. I'm just going to push the Skirk. It's a combo piece and it speeds him up. Chrome Gully without a sack outlet. It's uh, not the most intimidating thing. Future Goblin. Alright. So Goblin Beats coming down. I'm going to get a breeding pool to. Let me sanctuary sooner if I need to. Not 100% sure whether it's worth the two, but my guess is yes. And next turn, I can make a clue and sack it if I so choose. Grum Gully. All right, there's sack out a little way. Don't know how many they run, so hopefully it's just prospectors and maybe a couple sling gangs. When I was drafting up the deck, I was planning to run more than that, but you know, not everyone would. I think I am just gonna fire off a PO and draw three again, put it back in my hand and. Oops. Yeah, I need to flow mana first. Almost bad. So yeah, we'll just draw three, see what happens. And not too much. I'm just gonna play out these so I don't have to discard. And drawing a push was awesome. If I survive the turn, we're, uh, we're in a good spot. Hopefully I survive the turn. I mean, with Goblin Matron, he has a lot of redundancy here. It's pretty scary. Special like Mons, that's not it. That's pretty good. Definitely speeds up the clock. Uh, 
Um, all right. So I can sanctuary put back. Do I just put back a push here? It's interesting. I kind of want to just push both the good creatures. Maybe it's loose, but that's what I'm gonna do. I think with the Emery, I have enough like late game if I just get out of this hole. And I can just legend rule my uh, Mox Elfles to turn on Revolt. So, we're gonna do that. Push. And push. I feel like I was just at too too much risk of dying to like a random goblin lord or something. So we milled a we haven't milled much of use. Make another food, and the only artifact in my yard, sadly, is Moxa. Could have really used a bobble or a well or something. So, I really want to fade another Grum Gully. Munitions. Alright, so Goose can actually erase this. Uh, oh. So he knows that the goose is the important one. Alright. Have to say, I didn't expect it. People don't value the goose highly enough. But, yep. This is just going to be cranking out food. I'm just going to sack the... F Man, no, I have so much mana. If I draw an Urza, I'd rather have the food out. Did not draw an Urza. I'm really wishing I kept the PO, but I don't know. It was a tough spot. Um, all right, I still have a basic to fetch. Only one is Mox Opal, so we have Mox Opals and Yee's and Slive Drugs. Sorry, we have uh, E's and Mishra's Bobbles as live draws for Emery. E on 2 would be good here. A, what is this? Mogwar Marshall. Yeah, the beats are really coming down quick. Going to 5. Oh wow, they're playing Bushwhacker. That I did not expect. So eight. Yeah, I'm just dead. All right. Well, game combo combo got there. That's sweet. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the league. Not a bad record, and I think it was a decent showcase of what the deck can do. Um, we'll flood it out a little bit in that last one, unfortunately, but pretty happy with the performance overall. I think Goose looked quite good. Strong addition to the deck, although I'm still not sure how the archetype as a whole is positioned in the metagame going forward. But if you are playing this deck, I would definitely give Goose a try. It, um, it's been performing great, and I hope you enjoyed seeing it there. Thanks for watching!